tomatoes. I have giant crimson tomatoes, only a few of them, uh, from MI Gardener. Some sweetie tomatoes from Fairy Morse. Some of these, th these are from Pages Seeds. I got these in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Uh, these are Rutgers tomatoes. Just another generic tomato variety. Large red cherry tomatoes, uh, Florida tomatoes. These are good if you live in warm, humid places like Florida. That's where they were bred. They really do. They really do well in the humidity and high temperatures. And this is really good for making pasta, sauces, and pastes, and things like that. A tropical sunset tomato. I don't have too many in here. They don't, but they are an indeterminate variety, so they'll produce all year long. I'm gonna keep them growing in my pots. A yellow pear tomato. Most of these are gonna be grown in my pots around the yard. I have 50 or 60 of them. It's just easier than trying to put these all into the raised beds to take up so much space. A giant pink Belgium tomato. Uh, uh, Cherokee purple tomato. These make some pretty, I would say medium size, like eight ounces or so of fruit. And they're indeterminate, so they should produce all season long. Mountain Princess Tomato, this will be new for me this year. Um, they're determinate. Uh, they have a predetermined amount of fruit that they are going to make in the fruits around four to six, in four to six inches. We'll see how they grow in Western Colorado in a pot. Red Currant Tomatoes, these are, these are good mostly for snacking on. Uh, they're pretty small. Jubilee tomatoes, never grew, I've never grown them before. Boxcar Willie, I probably won't even plant those, honestly. This is my all-time favorite, though, mushroom basket tomatoes. Um, these are an indeterminate variety, and they're huge. They're 16 ounces or so. Um, they can get a little bit bigger than that. And they only take about three months to get the seed. So these ones, again, are mushroom, ba mushroom basket tomatoes. Highly recommend. I've got some home homestead tomatoes. These are pretty good. More yellow pear tomatoes, some gold nugget tomatoes. I'm gonna to put these in a basket. They are determinate. They, they, they're about an ounce or so. They're a cherry variety, um, but they're pretty good. Another one from the from Pages Seeds, uh, just a generic cherry tomato. Federally tomato. It's an indeterminate variety. I've grown them. I don't think I've eaten them though. Uh, organic Amish paste tomato. These are really good. Um, more Florida Day tomatoes. Highly recommend if you live down south. Cherokee purple tomatoes. I think I have a few packets mixed up in here. 10 to 12 ounce tomatoes or so. Um, um, here's some just generic beef steaks. They, these things can get up to two pounds or so. So I mean, I know it's a generic variety of beef steak. I might plant them just to see how big we can get the tomatoes to grow. Uh, simil on the similar hand, we have the mortgage lifter tomatoes. Uh, these things get up to two and a half pounds. That's huge. So the variety gets its name from a man who sold enough plants for $1 each to pay off his mortgage. That's the story behind these uh, mortgage lifter tomatoes. Roma tomatoes. A lot of people just have these. I've, I've always grown them. They grow really nice. This is a, a Russian indeterminate heirloom variety of tomatoes. I'm not going to try to say the name because I really don't know how to pronounce it. So these these grow really well. The striped Roma tomatoes, just like a Roma tomatoes with a stripe. Uh, Goldie tomato, uh, these are pretty good. This is a good indeterminate variety. 12, 10 to 12 ounce fruits on these ones. Uh, Englehart cherry tomatoes, it's a cherry variety. It's gonna go in a pot. They, they produce fruits that are like an ounce or two and they grow all season long. So it's perfect for pots. Uh, Moonbeam tomatoes, I'm so glad these I'm so glad that these are indeterminate because I like to have them all summer long. Um, they, they make pretty small one ounce tomatoes, but they're really good. Tropical Sunset, I have a few packs of those. So I love to have them in my containers around the yard. Um, some Oxheart tomatoes, these grow well in Colorado. Uh, can confirm that. Uh, San Marzano tomatoes, everybody has these, it seems like, and, I, and for good reason, I buy them every year. Some big rainbow tomatoes. This will be new for me this year. I haven't grown big rainbow tomatoes before, but their fruit sizes, like the name suggests, can get anywhere from one to two pounds or so. And last but not least, just a generic beefsteak variety with just kind of a generic range for final weight. These ones around nine to 12 ounces, but notice the other ones that I had were like one to two pounds. So make sure you read the package when you're buying beefsteak tomatoes because there are several different types of beefsteak tomatoes. So just the more you know. So right now I'm just going through and just taking inventory to see what I have for, for seeds. And I'm just on the tomatoes right now. 
just some beef steak. I try to write down approximately how many seeds I have, about 25 or so of those. It just helps me when I need to, you know, go order tomatoes in the future. So big rainbow tomatoes, 25 of those. I have San Marzano tomatoes, 25 of those. Moonbeam tomatoes. Those are all my pepper and tomato varieties that I have. I realistically, I'm gonna put most of the peppers and tomatoes in pots around the yard. Having that many different varieties is insane. To try to put all in raised beds, they'll take up way too much space. I'll put the ones into into containers around the yard that I can, and then I'll plant a few in the raised beds. I have plenty of hanging baskets around the yard, and then there's just some that I'm not gonna be able to start this year. Maybe I'll try them next year, especially if some of these plants fail this year. I keep, I keep record of everything. So I'll see what works, what doesn't work, and there's always next year to try again.